This is a Fire Old PC with an Intel i7-8700 DDR3 RAM as well as an RTX 2070. It needs a big upgrade. No, it wants a big upgrade. So we are going to turn this PC into a high-end or Corsair build. So what new PC parts did we get? Let's begin with the case, the Corsair IQ 5000X RGB. It is an all-glass mid-tower case. For I.O., it comes with a start button, two USB Type-A ports, a USB Type-C port, a microphone and headphone combo jack, as well as a reset button. Start by removing the side damper glass, the glass back panel, and the front panel and the mesh which covers the front intake fans. The additional power supply shroud and the accessories box are found in the bottom area, so remember to take those out. There are a few more items to remove, such as a side fan mounting tray and the removable side fan shroud. At this juncture, you will have access to the I.O. cables and wires so you can undo those and arrange them nicely. Next, we are going to install new front intake fans. These are the IQ Link QX120 RGB fans. It comes in a pack of three and are easy chained right out of the box. Each pack also comes with one IQ Link system hub as well as one 600mm IQ Link cable. Together with the system hub, this IQ Link cable allows you to run all IQ Link devices in your PC via the IQ software. We are also going to install the same fans on the side. We have put back the side fan mounting tray first before installing the fans. When you have finished installing the fans, it may be helpful to tie down some of the I.O. cables. Okay, so how about the other PC parts? For the motherboard, we're going to use the ASUS ROG Strix Z790-E Wi-Fi 2. This is part of ASUS's newest line of Intel boards. It supports Wi-Fi 7, has 3 PCIe slots, 5 M.2 slots, and tons of USB ports. Next, the 14700K with 8 P cores and 12 E cores is great to use with this board. I have reviewed the 14700K. If you want to know how it performs, you can check out in the link above. For storage, we have a 2TB Western Digital NVMe SSD. We will use the second M.2 slot on the motherboard. We will leave the top slot empty just in case the customer wants to get a Gen 5 SSD. Remove the slot cover and slide the SSD into the go notches. Secure the SSD using the Q-latch. Remove the protective film from the thermal pad on the slot cover and reinstall the slot cover on top of the SSD. Okay, the second part in the Corsair lineup. 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator Titaniums. Two sticks of 32 gigs each, 6000 megahertz, with a cache latency of 30. To install the RAM, align each module's key with the notch on the slot, exert some pressure, and push down on the sticks until you hear a click on both sides. Now that the motherboard is prepared, let's put inside the case. Align the motherboard's back I.O. with the opening in the case. The nice standoffs on the bottom of the case should coincide with the screw holes on the motherboard. Secure the motherboard with nice standoff screws. Next, we are going to remove the case's fan hub as we do not need to use it. You will also need to remove this cover to access the back of the motherboard. Next, you can also take this time to plug in some of the front I.O. such as the front audio, front panel connectors, USB type C and A onto the motherboard. Okay, so how much power do we need? We have this Seasonic 1000 watt power supply. It is ATX 3.0 which is good for our graphics card. Power cables that we are going to use are the standard 24 pin for the motherboard, two 8 pin CPU cables, set up power as well as 12 volt high power for the graphics card. We also need PCIe power for the system hub as well as something which I will show you in the later part of the video. So stay tuned. To install the power supply, slide it in and align with the opening at the bottom of the case. Secure it with the screws provided. Next, plug in the two CPU power cables. We are not going to plug in the 24 pin because of that something which I will mention in the later part of the video. At this juncture, you can chain the two sets of intake fans using the provided IQ Link cable. Okay, time to cool the CPU. We're going to use the Corsair IQ Link H150i LCD. It is a 360mm AIO with three QX120 fans pre installed. It features nice chrome fittings, weighted tubings, and of course, this 2.5 inch IPS LCD screen. The first thing to do is to install the back plates followed by the mounting standoffs. A good tip would be to install them in a cross pattern, and there is no need 
for a screwdriver or a wrench to tighten them down. Finger tightness is more than enough. To top mount this cooler, you have to remove the top bezel as well as a mesh covering. And this is where we face a problem. The CPU cables are blocking the radiator. So we have to install offset brackets to give some clearance from the radiator to the CPU cables. The radiator requires a Type-C as well as the IQ Link adapter to interface with the system hub. Next, we will install the pump head onto the CPU. Like the mounting screws, tighten the thumb screws in a cross pattern. Okay, let's wire up the rest of the IQ devices. Connect the side fence to the system hub using an IQ Link adapter. Connect the AIO to the system hub. The system hub requires PCIe power as I've mentioned, so I hope you have included that in your power supply. Both the AIO as well as the system hub require a USB connection each, so connect both using the USB splitter cable. And this USB splitter cable goes to a USB header on your motherboard. And finally, use this 2-pin tech cable and connect it to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Okay, well, if you remember, we have yet to plug in the 24-pin cable because we're going to include Lianli Strimers for the 24-pin and the 12 volt high power cables. Remember to connect the Lianli Strimers to the respective power cables to the power supply. And for the final step, the ROG Strix RTX 4080 Super. Unscrew and remove the PCI slot covers. And like installing RAM, you will hear a click when you install this GPU onto the PCI slot. Make sure to install the PCI screws back and plug in the 12 volt high power cable, which in this case is the Lenny Strimer V2 Plus. This is a beautiful build, no? Apart from the small obstacles such as the AIO, getting stuck to the CPU cables, figuring out how many things we need to remove from this case and how to connect the IQ devices, I would say we did a pretty good job with this all Corsair build. Okay, I lied. Figuring out how many system hubs and how many IQ link adapters we need took longer than expected. And the final total is two system hubs for the three sets of fans and the AIO. But that's not the hard part. Building is the easy part, but as always, getting the software to work well is always the harder part. I'm not saying that the IQ software is bad, but it's just not as intuitive, especially for the first time user. For a start, we'll have to reinstall and patch the IQ software a few times just to recognize all of the IQ devices in the PC build. And this issue also applies to the 4080 Super and the motherboard. Then you need to take time to identify each fan, each IQ device and the other PC parts that you have and rearrange them according to what you see on the screen. This is important if you want to have a certain color design or if you want the colors to correspond with the stock mural or your own custom mural design. And we had to have Lian Li Strimers here. I guess we're being ambitious because we thought that the IQ software could also control the Lianli Strimers. But they do not talk with each other. There is no adapter from either brand to allow them to interface with each other with IQ. So in the end, we're just going to let ASUS Armory create specifically Aura Sync to control the RGB on the Lianli Strimers. But a note here, you will need to set up the Strimers using LConnect 3 first before we can connect it all via the motherboard. I could go on even further, but I think there will be no end. But anyway, this IQ Link ecosystem is a welcome addition over the previous Corsair setup with the Corsair Commanders and the Commander Pros. There are a lot of less wires from for example the fans because they only need one or two cables each and the connections between one system hub to another system hub if you have more than one and to the motherboard is a lot more intuitive and a lot more easy to understand. That said, if you ever want to get into this ecosystem, it will cost you a lot. Corsair and Corsair IQ products have never been in a mid-price range but with this IQ Link ecosystem, the price has just went up a lot. The Corsair parts alone cost more than 1.8k and the PC a really really high price. <laughs> Bottom line, it is very expensive, but if you can afford it, why not? Oh yes, there is a more expensive tier of IQ Link custom loop products, but that will be for another video when it happens, if it happens. Alright, if you like this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more awesome tech content. Comment down below if you are interested to get into this IQ Link ecosystem. Bye!